ask that you help us to worship in spirit and in truth. We pray that you just touch each one of us right where we've been, where we need to hear you speak to our hearts. May that happen in each of our lives so that you can write upon the parsley tablets of our hearts and minds your will. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you right now. Come. choose to praise, to glorify, to glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, to glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against.
When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love She no longer has a place to hide Oh, I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken Oh, I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear it doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Well, there's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There is resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. There's power in your name. There's power that can break off every chain. There is power that can empty out a grave. resurrection power that can save this power
cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and he died for me and I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body bowed it was drenched in tears and then they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance was sealed by a heavy stone Messiah still he was all alone oh praise the name of the Lord our God praise his name forever the break of dawn the son of heaven he rose again oh trample death where is your stream the angels roar for Christ the King no praise of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on my Jesus face no parade about you but it'll be wonderful when Jesus comes and we'll meet him in the air I don't know how many G's will be involved you know what I mean by G's I think you know but it's going to be awesome but in the interim period we're going to serve him with all of our heart amen, amen. we have prayer concerns we have an offering plate back there uh, Margie's going to lead us in prayer she will be praying over the offering as well Richard Graybill, we need to continue to pray for him. He may be in that nursing home until September 13th. 
We don't know, we may go home earlier, depends on his progress. Vicki had uh, same day surgery, let's pray for her for healing. Frankie has a problem with his knee, he needs healing, let's believe God for that. Nathan's here, but Nathan needs some strength. Need to really lift Nathan up for strength and healing tonight. And then Paul Melacrinos. His mother went home to be with the Lord. I had the opportunity to call him yesterday and pray with him over the phone. The funeral will be uh, this coming Saturday down in, where is that going to be? Okay. Also, youth pastor. We want to pray for a youth pastor tonight. And then our country. Let's lift our country up in prayer. Praise God. Join Margie, Margie right now. Let's agree with her. Thank you, Father. <laughs> You're worthy, Lord. <laughs> Father God, we just come into your presence, and I would just want to ask you, Father God, in one accord, to um, do in vicious life, Lord Jesus. You know what's going on with his body, Father God. You know he's in that nursing home, Father God. He needs healing, Lord. He needs healing, Father God. Put your healing hand in his body, Lord Jesus. I also ask you for Vicky, Father God, that you give her a good recovery, Father God. You heal her, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the work that you're doing in Vicky, Lord. Amen. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the healing, Father God. We thank you for my husband, Frankie, Father God, for that knee. Father God, healing in his knees. Healing in his knee, Father God, because you are our healer, Father. And there is no one like you, my Lord. I also ask you for Nathan, Father, give him the strength that he needs, Father God. Give him the strength, Father. Father God, help Nathan, Father God. And give him the strength, Father God. Give him health, Father God. Father God, give him health, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. I also ask you for Paul, my Lord Jesus. I ask you that you comfort the family, the whole family. Comfort him, my Lord Jesus. Because it's sad when we, when we lose our loved, our, loved, our loved one, Lord Jesus. Comfort his heart, Father God. You are our comforter, my Lord Jesus. I also ask you, Father God, for the youth pastor that you're going to bring. Because it is you, the one that is going to bring him, my Lord. You are the one, my Lord Jesus. And we just thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We also ask you, Father God, for our country, Father God. That you take control of the country, Father God. You know what's going on with the country, Father God. And the only one that could fix everything, it is you, my Lord. And we trust in you, and we depend on you, and we know that you are mighty and powerful, my Lord. And we just thank you for everything, Father. We thank you for the offering, Father God, that you will multiply it, my Lord Jesus, that we could give so you, you could bless us so we could give more, Lord. Bless us, Lord Jesus, and take control of everything, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Anyone have a testimony? What? I, I saw you. So, I want to give testimony to about my son, Bobby. I can tell, I can tell that he is doing so much better. And I'll tell you why. Because mothers will get this. He doesn't. He's not real needy of me right now. Shut up, Patty. <laughs> you know I meant that in love. You know that, right? But it's a good thing, though. It really is a good thing. It's not that he don't need me. It's just that he, because I prayed, Lord, I want my kids to want you more than me because I'm not going to be here forever. I mean, you know, it's just the way it is. But he's so excited and he loves his apartment, and he wants to work. 
and he's not here tonight, so I wanted him to tell his own story, but I can't help but some things never change. So I just give God the glory. He's turning things around. I'm not just saying that because there's so much more in, in all of us that we need to change and grow and, you know, go from glory to glory, but I see it. He hears our prayers. I always imagine, Father, because it says in his word that he bends his ear towards us, so he's listening. He, he bends it. He hears each one of us. I don't know how he can, but he's God and I'm not, so that's okay. But anyway, just thank you for all your prayers. Thank you up there. Thank you, whoever's watching tonight, for all your prayers. And let's not stop. Let's be united and continue to pray for all of our families and loved ones, okay? Thank you. Praise God. Someone else with a testimony? I see that hand. <laughs> Thank you. So not actually mine, uh, but I feel I have the liberty to share this. Uh, Angel Reger <laughs> texted me yesterday morning quite excited because Christiana's blood level was good. And I didn't know if anybody, everybody knew that. But I mean, and it had changed in a month. Like it went from like 42 to 150 or something. It was so exciting because, you know, they were really at a loss in such a young person to be so unhealthy, but really awesome. We're so grateful to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I have one. Oh, I have one. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? Can I interview you? You look extra <laughs> handsome tonight. I just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I snuck up on you. Have you had your eyes sensitive? <laughs> Wait. Oh, yeah, you're better now. <laughs> <laughs> So does everybody remember last uh, Wednesday I testified about uh, Israel, uh, the young boy? And um, I, uh, you know, didn't know what to do. So I just prayed Jesus o over the young man. So uh, God did that to me again um, Monday morning. Uh, Patty and I were up in uh, Connecticut at a motel and uh, we were sitting there eating breakfast, and uh, Patty went to use the restroom, and a little six-year-old boy comes running into the breakfast room and says, my dad isn't breathing. Oh. Yeah. And uh, so, um, you know, after the, that incident with my brother, um, I'm certified in CPR, so I, I jumped up, and the the, mot the hotel uh, manager followed us down, and he had a master key, and he let us in. And so when I got into the room, there laid a man on the floor in the bathroom, but he was breathing, praise the Lord. Um, but uh, he was having a seizure, and uh, when he fell, he either bit his lip or hit his lip, and his face and so he was breathing but he was breathing and it was this saliva blood volcano yeah it was just spewing and spewing and spewing and so uh his uh, we'll just say wife his wife was helping him and so i'm like well we need to make sure he doesn't swallow his tongue um and uh but i, I at that moment i felt helpless because really beyond CPR and knowing, you know, from racing, keep them on the ground, don't let them get up, all that kind of stuff. Um, there wasn't much I could do. So I just started verbally out loud, just calling on the name of Jesus, calling on the name of Jesus. And the blood stopped. I mean, literally, it stopped. And um, yeah, and like even his wife looked at me like, what, what just happened here, yeah. you know? And, uh, but he, he, so he improved a little bit and he improved and he got up, he tried to get up and I'm like, no, you need to stay down. You need to stay down. And then he like had another seizure and, but the blood never started flowing again. I mean, it was, and he had a big slash across the bottom of his cheek. So, I mean, God showed me that twice this month, so that's a little scary. But the testimony is two things. When you don't know what to do, what do you do? Call on Jesus, and he is so good that he answers. 
Amen. Amen. Do you know who this? Do you know who the speaker is? Hi. Some weird, some weird guy. Yeah. Well, when I introduce him, you'll know who he is. Okay. okay. I think he has to go get his notes. He does. Yeah. Okay. So tell a joke. Oh, say can you see? That's why I quit. It's, it's, it's good to have Rich speak tonight. I want you to know I really appreciate Pastor Rich, don't you? And I appreciate Patty and what they've done here in this church and how God has used them to bless people. And boy, oh boy. So I'll introduce the speaker now. Pastor Rich. <laughs> oh, all right, I won't sit down. Freeland. Woo! Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Can everybody, is the level good? Yeah. All right, because I'm the sound guy too, so if it's, not, <laughs> if it's not good, I have to go back there again. But um, cool. So uh, guess what? I'm not preaching tonight. No, it's Bible study Wednesday, right? So, um, you know, so it, it's going to be a little weird because it's me, right? So does everybody know who Smith Wigglesworth is? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So does everybody know who Rick Warren yeah. is? Do you think they would have been buddies? Oh, I think. Okay, good, because this is kind of a combination of, of the two of them. I was inspired by both of them. Now, I see them as a weird combo, but, you know, that's just me. So you can put up the first slide. Are you stuck in a rut? Yeah. Are you stuck in a rut? Is anybody stuck in a rut? Been there. Been there? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think some of you aren't being truthful. But I'm not judging because that's, for, that's for, for God, not for me. But I know I get stuck in ruts. <laughs> so, you know, and sometimes it's literal because <laughs> I try to drive places I shouldn't go. <laughs> oh, we can make it. <laughs> Nail it. Right, Patty? How many times have you had to push my motorcycle out of some place I shouldn't have been? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I buried it in the sand once up in, in Florida. Do they, what do they call that, that white sand? Sugar sand, sugar sand. Yeah, and I just whoop right down in. All right, so let's go to the next slide there, Robin. Oh, that's way small, but I'll read it for you. So is everybody familiar with the Revelation 3.20? Okay, if not, I'll read it to you. It's pretty famous, you know, and um, you, everybody has that picture, right, of the clean-shaven Jesus. You know, he's white, and his hair is perfect, and he's standing at the door knocking, right? So it says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious as I sat with my father on his throne. A lot of so what do you think about that? Do you like that? See, Bible study, it's got to be interactive here. You guys aren't just sitting here. I'm not going to tell jokes. You know, like, it, it's pretty cool. Though. I mean, I like the pack where it says, you know, we'll have a meal together because I'm always ready to eat. And then to eat with Jesus would be pretty good, right? You know. Although, you know, I've had St. Peter's fish over there. They don't cut the head off or anything, you know. Yeah, they just give you the whole fish. Yeah, St. Peter's fish. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, a lot of people confuse this, this passage, as like it's a, a salvation message. You know, like, oh, yeah, Jesus is there knocking if you open the door. But, but it's not. It's not. This was Jesus talking to the church of Lanacasia. And so these were Christians. They, they were Christians, right? And he's saying, hey, I'm knocking on the door. But why would Jesus be knocking on the door of a Christian's house? Anybody? There you go. There you go. Oh, she says, because they weren't having fellowship with him. Right. Maybe, you know, like it, like it says uh, in the passage, maybe they were getting lukewarm. Right. Yeah, they were getting lukewarm, right? 
So, and then in 22, you can hit the next slide. Uh, it goes on to say, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. So, so, so what's Jesus saying? He's saying, hey, you guys are lukewarm. You know, you had this zeal. You had this zest for Jesus. You had this zest for my father. But now I'm standing on the door and I'm knocking. Why? What happens? Nobody's going to answer me. You know what happens? Have you ever been in your car and the engine's running, but it's in neutral and you give it the gas? <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> oh, I just did it the I just did it the other day. I was out on my motorcycle. And it's a 1947 knucklehead, and they didn't name it after me because I wasn't alive then. But and I, I went to shift in the. I'm going up Route 11, and I'm going, and you know this is hand shift, foot clutch, all different stuff. And I hit first, and I hit second, and I hit third, and I go for fourth, and I think I have it in fourth, and I give it some throttle, and that engine, and it's an old engine, right? And, and I didn't, I didn't have it, <laughs> so I over revved the engine. But what happens is. We, the reason why Jesus has to knock on the door is because we get to a point where we think we're self-sufficient. We think we're good. You know, oh, yeah, I got this. I've read the Bible six times. <laughs> you know, or what? You, you, you know, I get up every morning, I do my devotions, I pray. But, but then all of a sudden there's this, because maybe that just becomes a routine. That's it. That's it. It's just a routine. You know, but so do we still have the desire to need Jesus, that desire, that burning, you know, for him to come and have a meal with us? Yeah. But it goes away, you know. The question is, do we need him or do we just leave Jesus outside, right? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Oh, hey, man, I, I, read, I, read, I read the whole book of John this morning. You can just stay out there and actually Uber, is it Uber? No, not Uber. DoorDash just showed up with some Panera bagels. I'm good, <laughs> right? Does anybody ever, like, get that way? Like, oh, yeah, I can <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many times Patty has to remind me, uh, especially when we're racing, if, uh, you know, we broke down on the side of the highway or something, and she's like, have you asked God to help you yet? <laughs> you know, and you being a manly man, right? I got this. I got it. I'll, I'll work on it, you know. But no, I mean, we want Jesus. I mean, and, and so, you know, when you think of Jesus knocking at the door to come in, like Jesus is coming in, but what does Jesus give us? Oh, you guys. The Holy Spirit, right? Right? <laughs> He gave us the Holy Spirit. Like he left and he says, hey, I'm sending somebody. Man, I didn't know I, didn't know I was going to have to dumb this down this way. No, I'm a, oh, hey, Patty, break out the tar and the feathers. <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Because, you know, pastor stumps me every Wednesday. He just, it's like, wow, I can't believe that. It's so good. But so uh, hit the next slide. So, ooh, I got these backwards. I should have numbered them. Galatians 5.16 says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Is that a good word? <laughs> yeah. How many people have a sinful nature? Yeah, you were the only one. Me and you, Diane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but, you know, you know what, like, we didn't, like, I didn't have any kids, but you moms out there, right? I mean, my mom didn't teach me to sin, you know, we, it, we, we, we have a sinful nature, you know, it just comes automatically. Did, did somebody have to explain to you how to lie? No, it's amazing, you know, you like, who looks that up in the dictionary? Nobody, because we have, but, but, but what we have as believers is we have the Holy Spirit, right? And we have this God. And what, what, is, what does the Holy Spirit give us that we don't always tap into? 
The power, there you go. Dunamis power, which is a word I love. But the Holy Spirit gives us the power to say no. It gives us the power, the power to say no. And that power comes through the Holy Spirit. And the other thing that the Spirit gives us is a firm foundation, right? You know, a solid rock. Not like the Peter rock, but, 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 but it's solid. You know, there's, you guys don't know this song, and I'm going to sing it anyway. But uh, I have a friend of mine who writes some music, and he has a CD. And, uh, and he wrote this song. It's called The Rock That Will Not Roll. You know, Jesus is the rock. The rock that will not roll. Yeah, it was never, you know, on the radio or anything. But I, I love, but that's who Jesus is. You know, he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so we have that foundation that we know when we, if we say no, we're stable. He's got us. And he, and he, and he, he doesn't want us to give in to our sinful nature. But just because it's our sinful nature, we fall back on it. And that brings me to, what's the next slide I have up there? Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. So so this is kind of the um, Rick Warren part of it. And so Ephesians 2, 19 through 22, a temple for the Lord. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house, built on a foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. Okay, and then I have underlined here, it didn't come out up there. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of his dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Now that does, you know, I mean, yeah, that's powerful, right? It's really powerful. But when you look at it in context, okay, because this was being written to the Gentiles. And who are the Gentiles? Us. Yeah, this was written to us. So, you know, it's hard for us as Gentiles in this age, 2,000 years after Jesus' death, to appreciate that as Gentiles, we were once on the outside looking in. So this was big stuff when this was written, but it's still big stuff now. It's just as important now as it was then because we're not on the outside looking in. We have all the favor. You know, you know the Gentiles before Christ, they had no hope at all. There was nothing for them. I mean, really, in reality, there wasn't a whole lot for the Jews either because none of, no one was going to live up to the law. But at least they could try, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, but then Jesus came and he opened up all, the, all of God's wonderful gifts to us, to us. And, and now, 2,000 years later, we just kind of take that for granted. You know, it's just, it's just commonplace. But it's really... Uh, Pretty, pretty cool. So, so since we have all these gifts, right, and God has done all this stuff for us, why would we be stuck in a rut? Does anybody have the answer to that question? Yeah, I mean, it's the million-dollar question, right? What's that? Yeah, I heard it, but... Uh, but no, but think about it. I mean, why would we be stuck in a rut? I mean, Jesus is right here. He wants to give us everything that he had. Everything. Like, there's no reason for us to be stuck in a rut. And I think last week, last Wednesday, Pastor really kind of hit on it. And I don't use all the verbiage that he uses. But when you think about it, why wouldn't we be victorious all the time? Yeah, we try to do it our way, not Yahweh. But that's a message for a different message. But, but it's the truth, right? We try to do it on our own or we forget, right? We forget that we have the victory. 
we forget that once we were cast out as Gentiles and Jesus brought us in to give us all the gifts and the rich riches of God. And sometimes it may not feel that way. I mean, I get it. You know, things happen, stuff comes down on us. But are we giving it to God or are we trying to do it ourselves? And, you know, um, you know, I preached the message once, does the victory last? You know, is there an expiration date? on your victory. And I, I mean, really, I think, you know, and I didn't use it when I preached that message, but if you look at Revelation 3.20, I mean, that's what Jesus is talking about. Yeah, we have the victory, but do we hold on to it? Have we kept it? And how do we do that? We do it because we believe. Because we believe that Jesus, God, he wants the best for us, always. And you know, we can go to counseling, and we can talk about stuff, and we can pray to the Father for stuff, and, and then we can walk out of the room and say, yeah, I got it. But if we wake up the next morning, why? What are we holding on to? Why aren't we just giving God the victory? You know, and I, it's like Pastor said, you know, we can have all this head knowledge, but we got to get that it's just got to be, what did you call it? Agape, no, not agape. Rhema word. Yeah, where the word is just in us. And you just do it without, without e even thinking. I mean, the, 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 I thought of two examples. And the one was with me. And people would say to me, so your motorcycle's going down the track at over 200 miles an hour. And it's starting to go to the left or to the right. And like, how do you fix it? How do you fix it? Well, you fix it through muscle memory, because I did it enough times yeah. that it just happened. Because at that speed, if I thought about it, it was too late. <laughs> if you go, oh, 10 towards the wall, what should I do? Oh, well, I could do this. <laughs> Till then you hit the wall because <laughs> you're moving so fast. It's muscle memory. And like, Pastor was a defensive, defensive guy, right? And so his, he always told me his goal was to get to the quarterback, right? That's all you wanted to do. But you never thought about how you're going to get to the quarterback, right? Because if you thought about it, the, the guy already threw the ball or he was pitched. You just go on muscle memory because you did it so many times. Oh, okay, the tackle moved this guy out of the way. I can sneak between the guard or whatever, right? That's how you did it. You didn't think about it. You just did it because you did it over and over and over again. Yes, you can say something. Yeah, yeah. Right, and, and, and you know, the testimony is, because all of us have been in that place, right? How many people have been at the end of their rope, right? Okay, well, guess what? Here's a testimony. Here we, yeah, there you go. We're all here. We're all here. Why? Because God will pull us through, you know? But sometimes we might go through things we don't have to go through, or we don't have to go through it again. We don't have to go through it a second time, because... Guess who's knocking? Jesus, he wants to come in. You know, and, and when it becomes a rhema word, when his word becomes a rhema word, it's muscle memory. We, we, don't go, we won't go to those dark places and relive that stuff. Oh, you know, yesterday I, uh, you know, said something bad to Patty, and I prayed about it, and I asked her to forgive me, but today's a new day, and so I'm going to feel bad about it again. And maybe even tomorrow. You know, some of us like to have, to have a little problem. Some of us hold on to it. You know, just hold on to it. Does everybody remember Akeem? No, you don't, do you? I preached about Akeem. Yeah. 
when they went in and they, they conquered Jericho and God told them not to take any of the plunder and he just saved a robe and some silver and a piece of gold, right? Because he just, he just kept a little bit. He held it back, you know? So, so, yeah, we could have victory today. We could have, but, you know, sometimes it's nice just to be a little sad and have to make myself a cup of tea and sit here and, you know, kind of be all melancholy with myself. It, it's a good time. It's a good time. Or you could ha- let Jesus come in and have the feast. He's going to have a meal, you know. But, you know, he really doesn't want to interrupt your pity party. <laughs> no, he does. He, there, he, there's no pity parties in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Give us this day our daily bread on earth as it is in heaven. So if there's no pity parties in heaven, there shouldn't be any pity parties here. Does this, is this, does this make sense? Yeah. You know, and I, I don't want to, I'm not like, I didn't want this to be condemning, but I found it inspiring. Like, yeah, you, you know, when you really look like, because we have the victory and we know, and we know it, but is it Rhema? <laughs> you, you know, do we just automatically live in the victory? Wow, you guys are so quiet. All right. Look, I'm almost done. We're going to get done early. You're going to like me teaching on Wednesdays because we get done early. I'm just tricking you into a false sense of security. The next time we won't get done till nine. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. So who loves the book of Lamentations? Oh, please. Yeah, well, there's some good. Yeah, yeah. hey, you know what? <laughs> I like your honesty. I think I'm with you, kid. No, well, no, I don't think I ever did. Just start from, but but like this, so so look, there's some good stuff in there, like Lamentations 3:22. The faithful love of the Lord never ends; His mercies never cease. Great is His faithfulness; His mercies begin afresh each morning. Let's just stop right there. Each are fresh each morning. Yesterday's problems are yesterday's problems. And you have the choice and the power through the Holy Spirit to say no to them today because that was yesterday. And who wants to remind us of yesterday? The enemy, the the Satan. Satan wants to remind us. And who wants to talk about our future? Jesus, right. So who's, who, whose team are you on anyway? Okay, so you know what? Yeah, you screwed up yesterday. But today begins afresh. It's fresh. Yes. So, verse 24, I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. Amen. So I just want to wrap it up by saying, look, we don't need to carry all this garbage. You know, and, you know, some stuff, I get it. It's easy to stand up here and say, oh, you leave all yesterday's stuff behind. Well, you know, if, you know, for me, if it's the motor company, which is Harley Davidson, telling me I have to remodel and spend a whole bunch of money to do it that I don't want to spend. I can't just go, oh, well, <laughs> that was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, but we can choose whether what we say no to, what we say yes to, but we can also choose what level of importance that has on our lives. Are we going to make our problems our priority or are we going to make our blessings our priority and then work on the lesser things when we have time to do it and when we can do it. So I hope that I encouraged you guys. And so I'm going to go like Pastor. So if, if, if you think this encouraged you and maybe tomorrow morning when you wake up, you're going, you will choose the, the 
to say no and say yes to the Holy Spirit. Raise your hand. And I'm not even looking. Oh, look at that. Of course you will. Of course you will. But yeah, and you know what? Muscle memory doesn't come in a day, did it? No, you had to practice. You went to practice. Football, you go to practice. Drag racing, it took me two years to figure out how to ride that bike, that big, fast one. Two years. Okay, so, you know, tomorrow morning you're not going to wake up and be like, oh, you know what? I got the Holy Spirit. I had the power to say no. But, yeah, I want you to wake up that way. But when it, when it doesn't, you know, when it's not all rose garden, don't give up. Just keep practicing. Just keep working on it because muscle memory takes time. There's no, you know, even, you know, like Patty and I are, 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 are studying uh, healing, spiritual healing. And some people get healed like, bam, like kind of like Tim and his knee, right? You went home and boom, you were healed. Some people get healed. They get their healing right away. But it, it, it takes a little while to manifest. That's the word I wanted to say. Thank you. Could you stand next to me and help me with this stuff? No, but, but okay. Both of you stand next to me. <laughs> but, but that's the thing, you, you know, so don't, you know, like just because you get up tomorrow and maybe things don't, you know, you can't say no. You can say no the next day. Why? Because what does our favorite book, Lamentation, say? Our new every morning. Look, boy, I think, I think that verse got raptured. No, uh, here it is. Uh, oh, can you read that? I can't read. Oh, now I can if I look really hard. <laughs> Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. So look, don't get stuck in a rut. Say no. Say no. You know what? If you've talked out a problem and you, you felt like you had healing, you don't need to revisit it because that's just the devil bringing it back, bringing it back. Claim the healing. Make it ra a rhema word. Make it muscle memory. Okay. Peace out. We love you. So let's pray. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you for your new mercy. We thank you that every day is a new day, and you see us through the eyes of your son, Jesus, Lord, white as snow. We all fall short, Lord, and we just thank you that your son lifts us up and takes us out of the rut, Lord. And yeah, we want, we want it. We hear you knocking, Lord, and we want you in our homes, Lord. We want you in our minds. We want you in our hearts. We want you to be every part of our day. In everything we do, we want to be filled with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Clap for Jesus. Uh-oh, we got something. We got something. I'll give you the mic. Here. So, Debbie Rank reached out to me if we could get uh, Jesse to church and to the picnic. So uh, we really can't make that happen. We could probably get her home, but with getting the food and getting everything done, I, I really don't. So they live in uh, Sealands Grove, like like a block off Main Street. If, if anybody has any thoughts or if, if anybody listening, reach out to me, reach out to the church um, to see if we can make that happen for Jesse. I think it's cool that she wants to come, um, but to get picked up in the morning and then get from the church here over to the picnic because it sounds like we're going to have good weather. <laughs> so uh, just reach out, please. Thanks. That was a public service announcement yeah. brought to you by My Voice of Reason. God bless you guys. You, you, are you good? All right, we can go home. Wake up tomorrow to his new mercies. Amen. And don't be stuck in a rut. Thank you.